Stephen, thanks for your time. Um, first, tell us why, why Stephen Yarwood for, uh, for Lord Mayor? Well, I'm really passionate about Adelaide's future, um, highly technologically literate, and I've worked in state government and local government and parliament as a town planner for 20 years, so really think uh, I have the knowledge, expertise uh, and skills to help modernise the corporation and make a really significant difference to not only the city of Adelaide but the community uh, to build a city uh, of international excellence that can compete in the global economy. Now, what would you consider to be your constituency that, that's, that's going to be supporting your um, your race for the, for, the, for the Lord Mayor? Well, I've really focused on engaging the community, so that's actually a very diverse range of people. I don't necessarily see myself as being uh, a niche person that actually makes uh, enemies or has any particular focus. I'm offering professional leadership, so in fact I've got a huge amount of support from a whole range of communities, including the residential community, the business community. I'm passionate about main streets, uh, also the arts community, uh, gay community, uh, and I live right next to the Central Markets and Chinatown, so I have friends spread throughout the entire city. In fact, it's amazing when you knock on a door and somebody opens it, you realise you have more friends in the city than, than one realised. Now, one of the key issues for the uh, Adelaide City Council is the fact that in recent years it's become increasingly irrelevant in the state sort of uh, polity and, and the legislature with the state government overriding many of its decisions on development applications. What, what are you going to do about bringing back the City Council as a, as a, as a relevant body in, 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 uh, in the state? Well, I think the f people often ask me what the first thing I will do if I'm elected, and that really is about leadership and teamwork. We really need to work with the state government, get a council that works together and have a Lord Mayor that's a conduit with the Premier and also Cabinet uh, to get things done in this city. So it must be a team approach. And frankly, as a 40-year-old uh, Lord Mayor who's worked in state government for nearly 10 years, understands the system intimately, I'd suggest that with a clean slate, uh, we've actually got an exciting opportunity here to hit the ground running and start to work through how we're going to work together to build an authentic city from the ground up. One of the issues that has uh, perhaps divided the City Council from the State Government has been the Victoria Park race course. Um, and one sees it at the moment and the walls have come down but to reveal a, a pretty, uh, unfortunately, derelict old grandstand and, and at the stage is open parks. What, what do you see? Is, what's your vision for Victoria Park race course? Victoria Park race course, we have an excellent plan that's underway. It will take a long time, but that's all about funding. If we can work as a team with State Government and in fact engage the federal government much more effectively, we should be able to start to get some results in the next 12 to 18 months. The grandstand will be upgraded. There's going to be fantastic wetlands down the other end with some nature and interpretive centres, uh, and also some sports grounds are pretty much underway now. So very much People's Park. It is the single biggest piece of uh, uh, open space in the parklands, a wonderful place for people to go. I would like to see the grandstand go up and down much more quickly, and ultimately, maybe we should be considering a new grandstand on the edge of the oval, uh, not smack bang in the middle. Uh, but I'm open to suggestions and uh, it'll be exciting to start to see some results in the very near future. Um, the record of the City Council in recent years in relation to buildings that are currently on parklands, I mentioned the Victoria Park Racecourse Grandstand, a terrific heritage building, or old building. But the record has not been great. There are things like the uh, Prince Alfred College boat shed uh, that, that's collapsed for want of care, the University Oval Grandstand and the boat sheds there. The City Council has provided no support uh, for those buildings, notwithstanding the fact that it has policies that talked uh, highly about maintaining buildings on the park lands. Um, what, what, what's your view about uh, the proper maintenance of those uh, terrific old buildings on, on the park lands? The park lands have a huge amount of assets some beautiful buildings and some very uh, effective buildings in terms of building community activities in those uh, public spaces. Well, then no, no doubt we need a team approach to working with the people that actually lease those properties. In fact, it's my understanding that the people that lease those properties are responsible for maintaining it. With our budget, uh, limited budget, it would be difficult for us to take responsibility for all of those assets and working with each of the lessees that uh, have those properties is going to be very important. Uh, I know the CEO has a very much a focus on getting a grip on all of the buildings, the quality that they're, the condition they're in, 
and maintenance moving forward because uh, we need to have a much more detailed understanding of the long-term ramifications of the management of those buildings and be communicating that to people that use those buildings. I want to touch on the question of Rundle Street and Rundle Mall. Uh, traders there are saying that whilst the suburbs are doing okay, the city uh, trade is pretty flat. Um, I think Rundle Street East is in bad condition as it's been in 10 years as a former tenant down there, with uh, lots of shops closing and the like. What, what are your plans for revitalising uh, both Rundle Street East and, uh, and Rundle Mall? Well, great streets build great cities and we need to focus on our main street cultures to bring people back into the city. They are our point of difference competing with the supermarkets and the generic shopping centres in the suburbs and I'm very much a cornerstone of my campaign is about building authentic main streets that will then compete with the supermarkets in the suburbs. So having a business in di district improvement process where we have a Mr Rundle Mall we have a Mr or Mrs Rundle Street who is a single point of contact to actually work with all of those traders so that they're working as a team and punching above their weight is absolutely critical. Uh, I also believe we need to focus on the public realm. If we were to slow traffic in those main streets, have high quality footpaths and actually make it virtually cost uh, neutral to put tables and chairs outside and not actually hit the traders with big fees, we will promote an environment where people will want to come to these places, stay longer and in fact property prices increase, residential development demand increases and all of a sudden you start to build communities and if we focus on building a, a city of villages we will actually have the base on which to build a truly great city. The city of Sydney uh, is that in fact called a city of villages, New York, London, the great cities actually focus on building communities and from there great cities arise. Now, one of, one of the um, pressing issues at the moment in, in the public discourse is, is Adelaide Oval. Um, the City Council is the ultimate um, uh, less saw of that, of, that, uh, of that facility and obviously is, is a de facto or real uh, um, guardian of the park lands. Where do you sit in terms of where that development is going at this present time? There's only not one not negotiable for me and that is the Oval must be redeveloped. Uh, every city of international excellence has a stadium smack bang in the middle of it. In fact, it's twice as close to the CBD, the cultural, transport and business facilities as the Melbourne Cricket Ground is to the centre of Melbourne. They get 50% of trans public people using public transport. I strongly believe that anyone attending a major sporting event at Adelaide Oval should get free public transport. And if they did, we should be batting, pardon the pun, uh, at well over 60%. Now certainly I think uh, in the short to medium term we should very definitely be focusing at potentially 70%. Adelaide Oval is the single biggest piece of public transport infrastructure in the history of South Australia. With the electrification of the rail system, this is a fantastic opportunity to start to change the culture of our community and get people back onto public transport so they can have a few beers before the game, a couple after and really enjoy the cultural facilities that the City of Adelaide has and bring the CBD alive. So Stephen, many thanks for your time. All the best for the um, Lord Mayoral race in, in, in the next few weeks and um, look forward to discussing further uh, post-election. Great, thanks. I appreciate your time. Thank you.